that says I'm live over there. How come YouTube's not showing me? Hmm. End stream. Ah, there we go. Boy, that was slow. Okay, now. Now I can certainly say yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are around the world. Welcome to Kilroy's World. Welcome to my office. Uh, I'm Al Forte. Tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, oscilloscopes and about uh, AC signal waves. So anyway... Hope everyone's having a great night tonight, and uh, um, this cool weather that we're having is treating you well. Um, I'm certainly enjoying it very, very much. Um, but anyway, with that being said, let's jump right into the material. Let me let me make me mini. You shrink me down. Oh, I guess I guess it was the other way. Um, we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> about AC voltage measurement, or what's called peak-to-peak, -peak, or peak, or RMS voltage. And you probably knew this, but maybe you didn't. The uh, AC power that comes out of the wall is not 120 volts. Anyway. <laughs> So let's talk about voltage. So voltage, an AC sine wave, starts at as a zero voltage. And over a travel of, of time, over, over a time period, as, as time goes on, right, it goes to some positive value and then comes back down to, to zero. And then actually reverses and goes in the negative uh, quantity. Um, you know, it kind of kind of looks like a like a sideways S, right? But an AC voltage basically happens over time. Uh, so if it took if it took one minute for for a cycle to occur, it'd be a one hertz uh, cycle uh, or waveform. So at 15 seconds, the voltage might be say at five volts if it goes up, right? Um, you know, this this is a one second, right? So so at the halfway point. It might be, you know, almost the voltage or the voltage that it's supposed to be at, and then it drops back down to zero. So anyway, the voltage of an AC sine wave is always changing. So how is that voltage identified? Well, we talk about peak voltage, and peak voltage uh, can be identified in terms of what is the maximum amplitude of voltage if if this is time this way, and, and this, this is kind of like the display on an oscilloscope, you have time left to right, and then amplitude or voltage, um, you know, top to bottom. Um, so the voltage from the axis, so its peak value is defined as the peak voltage, or, or V sub peak, or V sub peak, or I'm sorry, sub P. Um, and it's usually found using the oscilloscope. What we do, and, and I'll just kind of go over it briefly, and we'll, we'll look at it some more later on, and of course in class we'll also be discussing this, but there's, there's some settings that you set with little knobs or with push buttons, um, and it defines how much one of these little squares is left to right, and, and we, can, we can call it a time interval, an increment or a time interval, uh, whereas the amplitude or the, the up and down is kind of like the voltage. You know, what, what scale are we setting it on? Just like we did, well, some, some of these uh, DVOMs actually had auto settings, but some of them had, you know, um, uh, different scales that you would, that you would click into. Um, so that pretty much is, is, is the same if you can think of it that way. Excuse me. All right, so let's go. Let's go back here. So peak voltage is uh, the 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 most voltage from from the zero mark to the top. Uh, the that's that's the peak voltage. 
can you uh, uh, imagine what peak to peak? Uh, peak to peak, v sub peak to peak, or v uh, p dash p is basically twice the value. This is this is like one and three quarters, right? One, and then maybe about a third of a or a quarter, or three quarters of a, of another one. So so it's actually twice that because it's not only in the positive direction is it one and three quarters, for instance, but also in the negative. Um, so the voltage from the highest point on one peak to the lowest point on another. Hey Rolando, welcome to the channel. How are you this evening? So so that that's peak and then this is peak to peak. If you got any questions please uh, don't hesitate to ask. I can actually hear it now so Hey Danny, how are you? Um, so, when we look at DC voltage, uh, a constant nine volt supply uh, uh, has has nine volts and has nine volts, you know, five seconds from now and ten seconds from now. And but uh, doing great, man, Do, doing great. So DC varies from AC in that the AC voltage isn't, isn't a constant voltage. It changes back and forth, right? It goes to that top peak positive side and it drops down to, to the negative side on the, on, the, uh, on, on the negative side, right? Um, but anywhere in between those two peaks, the voltage varies depending on when or where it is in, in that wave. Whereas DC voltage, boom, you know, is... is is the voltage that it is normally. So the two voltages are that way, uh, DC voltage or direct, and uh, an AC or alternating. Excuse me, guys. So RMS, root mean square. Um, an AC sine wave is never constant, so it rises and it falls constantly. So how much electricity does, does AC actually do? Okay, so Ohm's law states that to find the current, the voltage is divided by the resistance, right? I mean, that's, that's just regular normal stuff. The question is, is what voltage? What voltage are we going to are we gonna calculate? Are we going to do zero volts? Are we going to do the peak volt? Are we going to do the peak to peak? Or somewhere in between? Can you guess which one? Well, I guess I'm okay. Um, you know, some vary with that opinion, but um, got a little, got a little uh, uh, sinus thing going on right now. But uh, life, life is good. Um, so, going back to RMS, uh, we would use some other value, right? So, so. AC works as the amount of electrical work supplied by an AC voltage is identified by the term the root mean square or RMS or voltage RMS. An RMS voltage is uh, or equates to AC electrical work to DC work. So here's here's a nice little nice little tag. So RMS is equal to the value of the direct current that would produce the same power. Peak 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 to peak peak to peak. Hey, Patrick. Indeed, yes, yes. It's kind of, it's kind of a little sniffly, Patrick. So, so RMS is equal to the value of the direct power, right? That that it would produce if it if it had a a, a load, a resistive load that's dissipating the heat. So the RMS voltage can be found by doing this. Okay, can be found from either. Of the following formulas, you would take the voltage peak, and take and take the uh, square root of two, and that would that would give us, or the square of two. I'm sorry, uh, that would give us the the volts RMS. Or this is my favorite, or just take the voltage peak or the peak voltage and multiply it by 0 0.707, and that gives you RMS voltage. Really, that that is the voltage that we're used to measuring. Um, so over here in this example, we have 10 volts peak, which is being supplied to a resistor. So what is the volts RMS? So we've got 10 volts peak 
and you know it isolate or it oscillates back and forth. Um, and uh, the so volts RMS is whatever the peak voltage is. Well, right there it tells us it's 10 volts, right? So we would multiply that by 0 0.707 to get the RMS voltage. So so volts RMS is equal to 10 peak times 707, which is equal to 7.07 .07 volts. Now, the 707 volts RMS means that a 10 volt AC supply supplies the same electrical energy as 7.07 .07 volts DC. So remember we, we said it was a comparison between the AC voltage and the DC voltage, what work they actually did. So that's, that's what, what 10 volts peak would be, 7.07 .07 volts DC. Okay. Notice that it's, if it's 10 volts AC, What's the RMS voltage, which which is multiplied by point zero by point seven zero seven, right? So so if 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 a measurement is expressed in RMS terms, it indicates that a meter measurement, and this is really important, that a meter measurement is used. A digital meter will always display an RMS value when we're and I don't have one handy. Well, I guess I guess it's over there. When when we're using when we're using that meter with those with those uh, uh, probes on it, we're actually measuring RMS voltage, whether we knew it or not. Okay, if the voltage is expressed in a peak to peak fashion, then it indicates that we use an oscilloscope to uh, to measure it. And like I said, we'll we'll be working more with oscilloscopes in the lab. On Tuesday, we're going to go over some a few things, and and uh, um, so so in the circuit below, 10 volt peak supplies power to a 1k resistor. The RMS voltage measured with a digital voltmeter is 7.07 .07 volts RMS. The 7.07 .07 volts RMS supplies the same electrical energy as a 7.07 .07 volt power supply. Excuse me. So, so when we look at this, we look at the left circuit, and we see we see an AC source here, and of course it's a sine wave, right? And it says it's 10 volts peak. We've got a resistor here. The voltage that we read off of a voltmeter. I know this is going to confuse a few of you. Okay, the voltage that we read off a voltmeter is actually 7.07 .07 or 0 .707 .07 of that, that amount. So if we had 10 volts AC dropping on this resistor, it'd be 7.07 .07 because that's the, the RMS voltage that a voltmeter reads. Likewise, if we have a 7.07 .07 volt DC voltage source, this is the battery, right, cells, um, then we read 7.07. .07. I mean, there's no real difference, but this you'll have to you'll have to kind of uh, hang your your hat on it, you know, and kind of think about it, kind of put it in the back, you know. When I'm measuring AC, I'm measuring this, but my meter is is actually giving me the results of of RMS, which is 0 .707 .07 of the AC voltage. So. So the 707 uh, volts RMS is now used as the electrical value to solve for the current. So it's just the basic uh, Ohm's law. Um, where's my Ohm's law? I lost it. Well. Lost it. Okay. Anyway, so so it's it's just standard Ohm's law, right? Volts divided by resistance is equal to current. So 7.07 .07 volts divided by a thousand ohms is 7.07 .07 milliamps. I mean, it's as simple as what you've been doing, you know, half the time that that you've been working with the circuits, right? So so both the AC circuit and DC circuit below have the same current. So this one's got 10 volts. Of AC and this one's got 7.07 .07, but the actual current flowing through here is the same 
even though that one actually shows a little more. But that's that's uh, that that was the meter, I mean the uh, circuit that this was taken off. That's interesting. That says that says 0 0.071. Disregard that one right there. Do do not do not look behind the curtain at that. Um, so anyway. Uh, RMS to peak conversion. Suppose the voltage RMS in the circuit above is, is known, so, so you know what it is. But the voltage peak, you don't know what it is. So to solve for a peak value when, when you know what the RMS is, you know that it was 7.07 .07 volts, right? We take uh, the voltage of our, the RMS voltage and we multiply that by 1.414. And yes, you do need to remember these guys, but luckily, one point 414 is 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 twice of 7.07 .07, right or 0 0.707 so you might be able to remember it that way um, but to go from voltage RMS which is what you're measuring with the meter right to get a voltage peak notice that we said peak okay uh, we would multiply that RMS voltage by 1.414 and then and then we get the peak voltage so uh, if we do 707 times 1.414, look what it is, 10 volts peak, which is what we're saying. Hey, we've got 10 volts peak here. So the math proves it right there. Okay. Any questions so far? I'll kind of just slow down a little bit here because I think we're almost done. Okay, I'm going to say that there's no, there's no questions, or I think there's no questions. Boy, that's really, that's really backed up over there. Or, or. <laughs> yeah, Danny, I guess you're right. Home, home, home. That's right. <laughs> so. So voltage identification, okay, a typical wall outlet, right? That, that looks like a typical wall outlet, doesn't it? Supplies 120 volts AC. Um, this is peak, or is this peak? Is this peak to peak? Or is it an RMS value? Um, what do you think? <laughs> it's an RMS value because we're taking, we're taking a, a voltmeter Oop. And I keep telling myself all the time I'm going to take my Bluetooth. We're, we're taking and using the voltmeter, right, to check the wall outlet. And it says, hey, you got 120 volts. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. He did, he did. It's 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 all good. It's all good. So so remember this this is displaying RMS values. So if I say that I have 120 volts RMS, how much voltage do I actually have coming out of that wall? Okay, if we connect the scope, okay, to the wall outlet, we would actually be reading the instead of the voltage RMS, we could we can multiply that by 1.414 to give us the peak voltage. And that would be 120 times 1.414 which is actually 169 volts peak on, on the wall outlet. So the peak voltage of 169 volts, you could see that on the oscilloscope. You could actually see the 169 volts, but you're only going to see the RMS value on, on the meter. I wonder how many, how many knew that the actual voltage coming out of the wall was 169 volts peak. No, we just say it's one, 120. Yeah. We take the RMS route. So, um, so oscilloscopes are designed to view a time to voltage relationship. Okay. The voltage seen on a scope is expressed in peak or in peak to peak voltages. And uh, these meters are designed to display RMS values. 
So that's that's it for this for this uh, sheet. It's over in in right there. Okay, there there it is. Now we're gonna go over to this how to use an oscilloscope. Look around a bit on it. Um, the oscilloscopes that we have in lab, and I think I think this is it. Yeah, the oscilloscopes I think that we have in lab are gonna be of this tectonic tectronic type. And I just want to just go over it. Um, this this file is is uh, is linked right there to it, so you guys can look at it. I'm gonna just say a couple of things. Yeah, it 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 is it is yes it is uh, because these read RMS, and that's why you know that that is why. Uh, so yeah, that oscilloscope gives us that full that full wave display. So. Um, some things you need to know about an oscilloscope is you have to have proper grounding, okay? And, and basically to protect you and to protect the equipment and, and the circuits. Um, a real common device is a, is a wrist uh, ground strap. Put it on here, you, you, you plug it into whatever equalizes you and, and the parts that you're going to be looking at or working on. So some instructions on setting up the oscilloscope. It's got different channels that you can plug into. Uh, it can be calibrated. We'll be calibrating the ones in the shop also, um, or, or in, in the lab. Um, the little probes will, will connect to it. And I don't, I don't have an oscilloscope with me because they're up at the college. Um, the probes actually kind of isolate a little bit. Might have maybe a resistance buffer or something like that. Um, you can do both both measurements of voltage and time. Like I said, voltage is an up and down or amplitude um, setting, whereas time and, and you can see it kind of kind of open up or or squash down. Um, if I can plug this in, um, the voltage measurements. Of course, this is this is Ohm's law stuff. Voltage equals current. To, times resistance, current is equal to, it's the same, it's the same. Uh, peak, like I said, peak voltage is from, from zero to the highest point, okay? Um, look, look at this right here. This is, this is peak to peak right there. And this one here, what was it? 0.707? Is, is the RMS value that we would read. So that's kind of the comparison. Uh, these, these gradients, these little squares, can be set to be, say for instance, they're set for one second, right? One, between here and here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half. So seven and a half seconds. So whatever, whatever one wave will take, let's see, from here, one, two, let's just say three, four, five, to here. So one wave is from here to here, which is one, two, three, four, five. So so it's it's five seconds across whatever the voltage is, whatever the voltage might be. But but these little gradients can be changed or adjusted for smaller time segments or larger time segments. Um, when, you, when you look at amplitude, you do it from, from the center uh, vertical uh, graticule right there. So you go, okay, it, it goes from here to there. Okay, what is that? that that's how you measure the, the, the voltage. Um, you can make you can make time and frequency because frequency is one over time or time is is one over frequency. So if you know the time period, you can actually say, okay, this is a certain frequency um, by just plugging the numbers in. Um, there's also a rise time and a fall time that a width can have. The pulse width in this case is from here to here on this one. Um, anyway. That's a, I think there's a, there's a download on this. Let's see, that's proper grounding. There's different types. 
But uh, when we when we get into into class, we'll play around. The lab, and there might be another lab for the class. Um, the lab will be these two. There's a peak RMS lab where we'll uh, I might have to convert this over. Where we basically we connect a 1k ohm resistor to a function generator. We'll talk about a function generator too. Um, I guess I should have. I didn't even think about it, but it's just a little box that gives you different frequencies. I'll, I'll show this in class since I'll have one there. Um, in fact, I'll go over the oscilloscope also in class. Um, the 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 function generator gives us different frequencies and different amplitudes of those frequencies. So it gives us different waves, different um, different. Uh, forms of waves also. Let me see, I think I had, or maybe not. No, I think I had, uh, I thought I had the patterns, but I don't. Um, you, you have a square wave, a uh, Lesage's wave, like for AC, you've got a, uh, um, a wave that's like a sawtooth, but you can set them in, in the meter also, or in the, in the in the tester. Um, let's go back to this. Okay, this is the other one. Was it the other one? Or the same one? Well, we'll, we'll talk about this one. So we'll identify, convert, measure peak RMS voltages. We'll set uh, the, a trainer or whatever to 10 volts. We've got power supplies and 100. We'll be using the, uh, um, the uh, frequency uh, generator. We'll use the oscilloscope to verify the voltages and and basically do, do measurements and then do some calculations and do some more measurements and then do some more calculations. And so um, let me go to the other one. I don't know which one was it. This is 25.3 so it's this one which I had it open. Yes there it is. So on this one we're just we're connecting uh, a 1K resistor to a function generator, which is where I started, then connect the, oscill the uh, oscilloscope to the resistor and use the oscilloscope to set the peak voltage to two volts. Calculate the uh, RMS voltage and then measure the, uh, the RMS voltage. Of course, we're gonna measure RMS with this. Um, and then for whatever the peaks below, we calculate those and, uh, and we measure them. So those, those will be the two, the two things that we're gonna do. And like I said, um, let me see, let me see if I can, see, I, I don't know exactly the brand of oscilloscope that we had. I know it was a Tektronic. Um, there's a couple of different types of oscilloscopes out there, and I wanted to touch base. Some of them are analog, some of them are digital. The ones that we've got are digital. They're smaller oscilloscopes. The analog ones normally have a CRT. These have got a big LCD on them, or a small LCD, really. They're, they're really small. Um, there's, there's some that will capture the signals um, or the, you know, the voltages and stuff and store them. Um, some of them can give you multiple channels that you can you know, take readings with and, and such. Um, I don't, I think, I think ours have got at least two channels for sure, for sure. Um, get some really pretty, pretty images or pretty uh, waveforms. But as you can see, and then there's some that are actually, uh, you can actually hook up to a, to a board or something and pull all these different signals from all over the place and compare them. Different counting signals, different different voltages, you know, different wavelength or, you know, forms. Um, let me see if I can find something else. That's an oscillator circuit. No, we don't want that.
see how good this shows up. Yeah, that doesn't show it very well. And this isn't the oscilloscope either that we've got up there. Well, anyway, so with that, this is this is kind of the two things that we're going to have to do. And like I said, there's going to be some measurements, but you guys can probably figure some of this stuff out beforehand, maybe. Um, do a little pre-calculation. Um, that's really all I'm, I'm wanting to do tonight. Um, I just wanted to kind of say, hey, look, here's, here's a little something about oscilloscopes. You know, how they compare, and... Uh, uh, we'll do more stuff there when we're when we're physically in, in the uh, in the classroom. So, um, all right. Well, with that, let me let me do this. All right. With that, guys. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, if you got any questions, please uh, email me, and uh, we'll. We'll get whatever figured out that you uh, that you might need. Anyway, with that being said, you guys have a nice weekend.